Okay, everybody, we are joined here with head coach Mark Stoops. If you would raise your hand, we'll get to questions, but first we'll have an opening statement by a coach. Sure. Um, really uh, pleased with this class. Really um, appreciate our coaches. They've worked extremely hard um, recruiting and during this uh, really a strange year you know it's been hard for us uh, doing a lot of things virtually and not being able to get on the road but I feel like our staff once again worked exceptionally hard just keeping in communication with these young men recruiting them uh, talking to their families and uh, we signed 18 new players we do expect a few more uh, in the next couple days um, to add to this class and also wanted to keep a couple spots open for for transfers as well um, I think the big storyline for this class is the state of Kentucky. Really feel like uh, that was a priority for us coming into it and uh, really worked the, the state exceptionally hard. And uh, I want to give a shout out to to Coach Morrow, of course. He's going to talk to you guys in a little bit and all of our coaches, but, but also to uh, the coaches and to the programs in the state of Kentucky. Since I've been here, um, th there's been so much growth. It's been getting so much better and uh, these coaches do an exceptional job, and the product on the field is paying off, and it's so much better uh, top to bottom than it was uh, early on. And I think these, that's the big storyline with this class. Um, you know, obviously, you talk about the seven young men uh, that we signed from the state. Um, the, the past three years, we've signed difference makers uh, from the state. And uh, we want to continue to do that moving forward. And again, I think you have to credit uh, the high school uh, coaches and the programs because uh, they are developing these young men and you're seeing it on the field. So um, I'd like to start with that, talking uh, with the guys from, from right here in town, from Frederick Douglass. Coach McPeak does a phenomenal job, uh, did a really uh, good job stepping in when Brian Landis left and kept that program going and really proud, proud to add uh, – Jagger Burton and DeKel, um, those guys are, are, are difference makers. Um, you know, they've been a priority of ours since uh, two or three years ago. So, um, you know, really good team, had a very difficult loss a week ago, uh, but have really built uh, the winning culture there. Coach does a phenomenal job and, and great, great players there. Uh, going to Bowling Green, Coach Spader, uh, Jordan Dingle, um, Vince will be here in a minute to talk about him specifically, but again, big time uh, target for us. Um, you know, just has all the ability in the world, has that length at tight end that we're looking for, and uh, really appreciate Coach Spader and uh, adding another guy to, to play with Vito uh, from Bowling Green High School. And then also getting Justice, his brother, back, um, was a big time player coming out um, and transferring in from Georgia Tech, so we're, we're proud to add him to the program as well. Uh, moving on to uh, North Harden. Again, we're very proud. We're going to have three North Harden players as well. Um, Jordan, uh, joining Oxidine from a year ago, but Jordan Lovett, um, big time defensive back that uh, we're, we're happy to add to this program. And Lavelle. Uh, Lavelle Wright's a, a phenomenal running back, and uh, he'll fit good in this new system we're going to run. He'll fit good in any system. So we're proud of him. And then uh, obviously Kaya and uh, you know, the one thing about this that I'd like to recognize, Coach Thompson's done a phenomenal job at North Harden. Uh, you know, you can see the way that his teams play each every year. And uh, the same thing with uh, Coach Lucas. Um, you know, they won a state championship a year ago. We watched Kaya throw a, throw a winning touchdown at the end in one of the best high school games I've ever seen. So all these kids uh, come from winning programs and a winning culture, and it's a credit to their coaches. And for the rest of the coaches out there in the state, uh, good luck this weekend. It's going to be a big weekend here in Kroger Field. We wish under normal circumstances we'd be there watching you. And I can't mention you by name uh, in this press conference, but I did want to recognize the coaches that uh, we were signing, guys, because I'm allowed to, to comment to them directly. But do want to wish all the, the teams good luck this weekend. It's going to be a great weekend in Kroger Field, and we wish we can be there. Um, you know, again, uh, went up to Michigan, got one really good player out of Michigan, went into Ohio. Vince got uh, three more players out of Ohio, and we dipped into the south and got three quality players out of Georgia and two Alabama. So um, top to bottom, really good class. Had to go to Australia to get our specialist again in Wilson Berry. Um, hopefully he'll continue uh, to build on the good things we've done with Max and Australian punters. So 
looking forward to, to getting him here as well. Had a good conversation. He was the first one in our class yesterday to sign. So um, top to bottom, really, really good class. Um, good players top to bottom. Great young men. They're going to continue to help us build this winning culture here. Uh, we feel like we have the, the, the length in this class that we're really looking for. Um, top to bottom, you know, one thing defensively we were looking for was length in this class, and we really feel good about that. And offensively, we hit all areas. You know, we hit the tight end, hit running backs, hit wideouts, hit O-line, and, um, you know, really feel like there's good players across the board, and uh, that was really important to us. Questions? Sure. Okay, questions. First up, John Hale. Mark, uh, I think it was three years ago now in the 2018 class, there was so much attention because you didn't sign a Kentucky player. Not only did you get one of those 2018 guys back today, but you signed all those guys you just mentioned. How important was it in a year where you couldn't travel, where guys couldn't come to campus to make sure with, with players you were so familiar with locally to lock those guys down? Yeah, I think that was extremely important, John. Um, be, because of that, just we're familiar with these young men. We know the programs that we're coming from. We know how they're coached, and we know what type of players they are and, and, and people. So it was extremely important. It's been a priority um, to, to, you know, concentrate on this state. And, again, I, I'm uh, proud. You know, hopefully uh, some of the, the, the work that we've done on the field at, at the college level is, is carrying down, inspiring some of the youngsters you know, at, at the middle school and at the grade school and, and uh, you know, helping in some small way. You know, we, we are always open to the high school coaches, always invite them here and uh, have a great relationship with them. But uh, I mean that when I say that, I see the difference in the state. I see the way these coaches are coaching and the way they're developing players. And uh, just in this city alone, you know, there, there's some teams doing a great job and some coaches really working hard and, you uh, and, uh, you know, I appreciate that. And, and you know that my father's been a high was a high school coach forever. And uh, I have great respect uh, for the high school coaching and, and the way they're developing the, these young men. And uh, this year it was extremely important because, you know, you know, we couldn't, you know, get out and about like we normally would um, and watch guys throughout the year and, and go recruit them in December. So it was extremely important to, to get the best players to stay home. And, and we worked hard at that. Derek, Terry. Mark, obviously in this class, there's a big emphasis to add some talent at wide receiver. And I think you guys did that with uh, three or four signees. But specifically with Chauncey Magwood and Christian Lewis, John Sobron recruiting those guys, just, I guess what to say about the job that he did with, I guess, how, how much the passing game struggled this year, yet those guys didn't seem to waver too much. Well, without a doubt, John did a, a great job with Christian and uh, Chauncey. Those guys are difference makers at wide receiver. And then he also went down South and got Khalil Saunders and uh, Marquise thrower. And, uh, and th those guys are, are really good players. And, um, you know, John does a remarkable job. He really does. He's, he's very versatile. I feel like you could throw him anywhere and he'd recruit well. Um, but to go down South and get four difference makers, um, you know, says a lot about him and, and how hard he works at it. And in particular to sign two impact receivers, him alone signing the two impact receivers, um, you know, with us struggling to, to throw the ball a year ago. So it says a lot about John and, and what we want to do here moving forward. Larry Vaught. Yeah, Mark, one of the other receivers, and, and at least maybe a surprise to me, we talk about a little bit about Ross, how you got involved with him at a time when you couldn't travel and what you expect that you have with him. Well, I think, you know, the other two wide receivers in Devontae Ross and uh, Dekel, um, both are impact receivers, and, and we needed them. We needed that speed. We needed some, some explosive guys. Um, but with Devontae, we had our eye on him for a long time. And uh, to be honest with you, we kept that really pretty low and under the radar on purpose. And, uh, you know, we, we really liked him and wanted to see – uh, progress in certain areas for him and, and on the academic side, and he took care of business. And so I think that's what made him so attractive. So, uh, I, Larry, I like that hat, by the way. That oh. looks good. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, I forgot I had it on with the grandkids. Forgot it was on there. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Maybe I could borrow that. I you like can. it. Blue. You can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Josh Moore. I promise I'm not trying to be negative, Mark, but uh, um, 
Ohio, I guess you wouldn't maybe as, as you know, giving as it usually is for you guys. Uh, and not to, nothing against that. Is that a reflection of just where the class was or what you needed? Well, I think it's it's a reflection of John being able to go down south and getting four guys. Vince spending a enormous amount of time in Kentucky, you know, and and we we made a big priority to get the guys in Kentucky. That takes a lot of his time. And then with with COVID not being able to go back and clean back up, and 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 Vince making that normal late run through December and seeing guys face to face. That's where he does a lot of his best work. But we're going to continue. Ohio will still be really good to us. And we, we have great respect. You know that when we talk about Northern Kentucky and, and you just go right across the bridge there and we feel like that's part of our home state as well. And so we'll always recruit uh, Kentucky or Kentucky and Ohio that in that border in particular, um, you know, hard. And uh, we'll get very good players from there. But, um, you know, it also just says that, that uh, you know, we're, we're – expanding we can be diverse and go to different states and uh and uh you know we don't have to just concentrate on one state and one state alone but uh you know with vince you know heck he 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 got really seven and uh you know you know uh guys out of the state and then three in ohio still so i mean he's still all over the place um so um you know it's a different year with covid but we'll still get back in ohio nick ross you still got to see most of these guys before COVID hit. I know you didn't have officials and all that, but you got steam and camp or maybe at some games or whatever. What about the next classes? How are – what are the challenges of recruiting 2022 and 23? Just walk around and stop that light from shutting off. Uh, it uh, – you know, it does, it does have an effect, you know, Nick, for sure. I think it, it uh, will be different. That's for darn sure, you know, just – not getting out and for me you know getting out in in december and january i'm not allowed out in the spring um you know it definitely has an effect on all head coaches but um you know it, it is but it, it, what are we going to do it's a pandemic it is what it is and we got to do the best we can with getting to know these young people through zooms and interacting with them as, as best we can double checking with people we know in the communities and coaches and doing background checks on them as best we can but uh you know, it is what it is. Different. Did you say you Zoom with recruits or, or your own players more? Um, I'd say it's probably equal. You know, it depends on the time of year and what we're doing. In the next week, it'll be uh, more Zooms with recruits because we'll, we'll start hitting the next class pretty hard uh, right now with the Zooms. Jeff Drummond? Pro it's been you, though, Nick, lately. I've been seeing your face on this Zoom. <laughs> Way too much. They tell me I had to have a press conference yesterday. Now I had to have one today. I might, I'll probably have to schedule one for tomorrow. So we'll see you soon. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Jeff Drummond. Yeah, Mark, I'm assuming these three offensive linemen uh, you've got, I'd, I'd like to hear a little bit more of them. And I'm kind of wondering, uh, I'm sure John put in a lot of advanced work on them and is, is largely responsible for kind of identifying the kind of guys that you've had a lot of success with up front and are they well, kind of a reflection of him? They, they are um, without question, you know, Paul and David, you know, two Ohio offensive linemen, tough physical guys, um, you know, that, 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 that John identified and loved, you know, and so they fit the bill. Um, and then with Jagger, he's a different, he's a different guy. He's a difference maker. He's an impact player. Um, he, he, he runs and moves as well as any offensive lineman I've been around and, you know, had the opportunity to see at this point. And I know he's only going to get here and get better, but he has such a strong work ethic. He's such a great young man, uh, great family, you know, uh, really appreciate Jeff and Teresa. They've been very thorough uh, through this whole uh, process and Jagger's been wonderful to recruit. And he's a different, he's a different type of guy. He's just uh, very humble. He works extremely hard. But he's unbelievably athletic. John Hale. Mark, talking about Jagger and Dekel, I mean, for all your in-state recruiting success the last five, six years, there have been a few high-profile one, profile ones in Lexington, Central Kentucky, that have gone against you. What message did it send to see, keep those guys in particular? And then just what was the communication like when you can't even see them in person, even though they're just down the street or whatever the last? Well, it, it's, you know, a couple things. I mean, 
listen, every, everything works out for a reason and you never know how gonna, things are going to go. Just like Justin's coming back, you know, and, and we welcome him back with open arms. I mean, uh, there's a lot of good schools out there and good programs. We do uh, work extremely hard to keep the best talent at home and we want them here. And I think that's evident by the way we've been working at the past couple of years. And it, it has been strange, whether they're right down the street or far away. It's just, it's just different. I mean, I know I use that word a lot. You guys would probably make one of those little cutups where you make fun of me, but uh, it's a very different year, you know, and, and this was uh, strange. And, um, you know, you try to get to know them as best you can over the phone. I will say young people and all of us adapt like we all have to. It's just like us having this, this conversation. And again, you guys have been, you know, doing this with you every week, you know, throughout the season and, and uh, a couple of times a week with the press conferences and we just all adapt and do what we have to do. And we'll continue to do it until they, they, they tell us otherwise. Okay. Let's do these last two with Josh and John, and then we'll get to coach Marrow. So we'll start first with Josh Moore. Mark, I, I don't expect you to throw out names, but you, you mentioned maybe some guys coming in the next you know, few days or, or whatever. Maybe an idea of what positionally or what those guys might be bringing. We'll, we'll see. Uh, some needs. You know, we're, we're going to concentrate on some needs. And uh, so we will see. I, I also purposely uh, left some spots open for some transfers as well, I think, with the – uh, the rules passing and the flexibility with the transfer, you have to leave a few spots there. Um, you know, a year ago, uh, we had such a good recruiting class and I had to, I, I was really crunched for numbers right down to the wire. And uh, that's pretty stressful, you know, on a head coach. And that's why you see, I, I'm, I'm just throwing out a number. I would guess probably nine, nine out of 10 programs in the country are under the 85 limit you know, because it's hard to hit that number perfectly with having 25 initials. So we're only allowed 25 initials no matter what. Um, so some years you have more room than others. And uh, last year was a small class, but we signed a lot of guys. And so you count on a little bit of attrition uh, to hit your 85 and it worked out, but I don't want to live in that world every year getting that tight. John Clay. Mark, my question really kind of goes back to yesterday. When we were talking to Coach Cohen, he said that one of the connections was Coach Cromer with the Rams, the offensive line coach. Uh, what that you you guys are friends, families are friends, and what uh, can you talk about the relationship? And can you and, and what did he tell you about about Liam? Yeah, you know, Coach Cromer and uh, many others. Coach Cromer's son played and coached with my brother at Oklahoma, and we know him. Uh, from vacations and, and time in Florida. And, um, you know, but uh, I know se several other guys. So I know quite a few guys uh, with the Rams and did a lot of research. And, you know, and you could tell by the people that make comments on Liam that he's just a, a very sharp individual and, uh, you know, really has a, a good command top to bottom. I think the area of expertise that I was looking for was QBs and receivers. And I mentioned that. I think that's the big key for me with the with the OC was being very detailed and, and having total control of the quarterback and receiver room because that's the area where I feel like we need to make the biggest jump. All right. Thank you, Coach. Uh, one second and we'll get to Coach Merrill. 